grace and peace to you today. We are continuing to talk about uh, spiritual disciplines or spiritual practices as we move through the season of Lent. And so today what we're uh, looking at is the practice of almsgiving. Uh, almsgiving, a couple just quick definitions. Uh, either it can be looked at as the making of charitable donations or a work of justice pleasing to God. Uh, and when we talk about justice in a biblical or faith sense, often what we're talking about is more uh, working for all people to be valued and cared for uh, equally, uh, making sure that no one is taken advantage of or oppressed. It has less to do with uh, kind of paying for our crimes like we talk about it these days. Jesus named almsgiving in Matthew 6, uh, and it's a reading that we begin the season of Lent with uh, at Ash Wednesday each year. Um, it's worth noting Jesus wasn't introducing the idea of almsgiving, that uh, um, that was really already the expectation that, that you were going to be about that work already. Um, uh, he was just giving commentary on, on how it, should be, it would be done, um, not to get praise for yourself, um, but that it's done in private um, uh, without any um, uh, benefit to yourself in that. St. Augustine said that our excess belongs not to us, but to the poor. So whether we're talking about giving of our money, um, which is kind of a classic understanding of almsgiving, or we're talking about giving our time and our abilities to the poor and in need, um, really doing so opens our own hearts to the needs of others. Luther says that sin is uh, navel-gazing, is one way he talked about it, that we're turned in on ourselves and, and essentially looking at our navels uh, and not able to see the needs uh, and concerns of those around us. Um, and so almsgiving, uh, giving of our money, giving of our time to others, uh, is a way that, that has us look up and look up and consider those people around us and meet the needs of others. Jesus says that where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Uh, so almsgiving is a way that we invest our treasure, um, whether it's our time, our money, uh, whatever it is that we have to give, um, we invest that in others. And so our spiritual growth happens as our hearts follow and we love others as much or more than we love ourselves as we invest in others. Almsgiving recognizes the image of God in folks uh, that are often seen as less than in the way society views them. Um, for our own spirituality, uh, as we give away our time and our money, um, we give away things that can often become a distraction from God, often things that, that we focus on uh, more than we focus on God. Uh, we give away things that we can come to trust in instead of God. Uh, often our things are, are what gives us a sense of security um, that if we just have enough, that, that we'll be safe and secure. Um, and, and so we trust in our things and in our money more than we trust in God. Um, we're giving away things that can become our joy instead of God. You know, often our joy comes from the things that we acquire uh, and, um, and, and we get distracted uh, from the reality that our joy really comes from God and our relationship with God. Almsgiving recognizes God's provision for us, that God gives abundantly enough to share, um, and it brings joy. You know, we're not meant to live in fear. Uh, we're not meant to be afraid of whether we're going to have enough, but, uh, but almsgiving allows us to live in joy of what God has already done for us and is doing uh, to care for us and for the world. Um, so almsgiving, you know, certainly is, is meant to be uh, a way that we care for others, um, but there is spiritual growth that happens in us, and there is a grace that we receive in it as we realize the ways that God has already cared for us and equipped us to care for others. Uh, and um, so it's a wonderful way that we focus on others, but we realize the joy and uh, the growth that happens um, as we care for others and, and live in the way that God has meant us to live, living outwardly for others and not inwardly for ourselves. There are a lot of good examples of folks doing this work. Um, so uh, in, in our own area, uh, our church supports Sox Crisis Ministries uh, regularly, donating food and money. And they're folks that, um, that are really committed to working to the, the, the poor and the in need in our area. 
Uh, Belmont Community Organization, BCO, is doing a lot of good work for that and we support them as well. Um, Habitat for Humanity is uh, going to be doing a big build uh, coming up soon and, and we're committed to working with them and, and are excited for the work that they do, making sure that folks who uh, have had insecurity in their own living situations that they can gain that security and um, and be able to uh, be able to have a home and, and a place that they can um, feel at rest and, um, and and have the joy in that. So we support that work. Salvation Army in Gaston County is the only shelter really that I know of. Um, there's some other kind of moving shelters that are at work as well, but um, but that's another wonderful place to invest and and. Um, you can go and volunteer there and help make meals as well. Uh, and then in Charlotte, which you know, often we think on the other side of the river, it's a different world, but, but we're, we're pretty close to them as well. There are folks who do a lot of good work for those in need there. Um, ones that we've supported at times would be uh, like the Second Harvest Food Bank um, and Loaves and Fishes. They both do some wonderful feeding work. Uh, and uh, one of our members works uh, with Loaves and Fishes. And um, so supporting them as we think about how we can... Um, be a part of almsgiving, giving to the poor, giving to the in need, um, that, that supporting organizations like that is a wonderful way that we know that, um, that the resources that we uh, invest uh, are, are being used well and faithfully. And um, so that's a great way to do that. But also, uh, you know, we may know individual people uh, in our own lives who are in need and, and need some help. Um, and, uh, and caring for our neighbors on a one-on-one -on -one basis uh, is also a wonderful, faithful thing. And, and there's a great relationship that happens with that as well. Uh, so I certainly lift up those examples as well, if you know folks in need. Um, so, uh, so there's a lot of good ways to do that. Uh, Bernard of Clairvaux, uh, who uh, church father, says, um, If you are to do the work of a prophet, what you need is not a scepter, but a hoe. And I think the work of almsgiving is work of making God's love known in the world, that we are um, putting those, those words and those teachings into action, and we're making the love of God manifest in the lives of others when we do that work. Uh, and so I lift that up. That's one of the spiritual practices that uh, is often tied to Lent um, and uh, in a wonderful way that we can um, both invest in others and care for others as well as grow in our own spirituality. Uh, so I, I lift that to you as a way to, to um, take on a, a new or invest um, more in a spiritual practice uh, this Lenten season. God's peace.